Hello, welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. And Skojo has taught me a magical thing in the settings of, of our software, which I didn't know about. So if you look at this grid, you may see that arrows seem to be hidden behind thermos. But if you go to the settings, there's this, this option that I've never been aware of, draw arrows above lines. And I'm gonna click that to on and re reload the puzzle. Yes, look, the arrows are now visible above the thermos, which is incredible. Hats off to Sven for creating that um, and to Skojo for knowing it was available. I didn't, um, which just shows I should keep in touch more. Sven is a master and a genius, and we strongly recommend that you get Sven Sudoku Pad, which is one of the links under our videos, along with all of our apps, which include Arrow Sudoku and Thermo Sudoku, although not arrows like today's arrows. These Skojo's come up with something different for us. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, there are other links under the video to our merchandise and, of course, to Patreon, where this month we are running Evening Attractions, um, a Sudoku hunt based on negative constraints. Do check it out. Hundreds of people have solved it and congratulations to them because it isn't easy to get through. So very well done if you have completed that mission. You still have a couple of weeks left if you haven't. Give it a try. Uh, that's on Patreon where there's always some extra content. I haven't recorded my hard crossword for the month yet, but no doubt that'll be there in about a week or so. But I'm now going to go through the rules. Now, Skojo... I am left wondering, Skojo, when I met him at the World Sudoku Championship last year, told me about a game in development. And I think that game might have been Islands of Insight, which we started playing on a stream yesterday. So check out the VOD of that if you haven't seen it already and get ready for next week's. I have no doubt we will be going back to the Islands of Insight. Um... Yeah, I mean, it was an absolutely fascinating, brilliantly produced game with puzzles that varied between really very straightforward and absolutely vicious. Um, and the, just check out the video. Go to about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes in to watch Simon playing the incredibly difficult Nurikabi game. And I'd still love to know what the logical method through that was because I don't think we quite established it. Anyway... Today, I will be finding a logical way through this, or you won't see the video. Not your average thermo puzzle by Skojo. The rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. We'll be putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Along a thermometer, these are dark gray, obviously, digits increase from bulb to tip, so they get bigger. The thermometers are normal. The arrows are not. Digits along an orange arrow, well, they look a bit yellower on mine than maybe orange, but I'm fine, but we know what it, what it means. They average exactly to the digit in that arrow's circle. So these three average exactly to that digit. Multiple arrows extending from the same circle are treated as different arrows, each averaging to the circle digit. For example, a circled three, let's imagine that was here, could have one five on one of its arrows and two four on the other, because both arrows would average to three. For clarity, average in this puzzle refers to the arithmetic mean. Just in case you were thinking it might be the median, which is possible, or the mode, which is insanely unlikely. Does the mode ever actually get used apart from in fairly elementary maths classes? I don't know. Anyway, it's not generally, in my view, one of the possible averages. Median could be, but anyway, we're talking about the arithmetic mean, which means that if you multiply the one and... Sorry, if you add the one and the five that we were positing on one of these arrows together, six, divide by the number of numbers there, which is two, you get three, which was what we were saying might be in the circle. So give it a try on the link under the video. Always watch the rules section. We got quite a lot of people yesterday saying, I don't understand the rules at all. Well, I explained them very carefully, out loud. So just watch the rules section if you don't understand the rules. But honestly, if you the person who doesn't re listen to the rules section, you didn't listen to this bit. So why am I talking to you? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to have a go at this puzzle now. 
by Skojo. Let's reset the clock and let's get cracking. So, never afraid to pencil mark a big old thermo. So, three, four, five, this could be one, two, three, or four. Mm, these thermos aren't quite as big as I thought. So I'm having to put four digits in each segment. But let's see what that teaches us about digits along them. Not much, because there's not a lot of interaction. Ah, well, maybe there is interaction through this cell. Yes. Okay. What is the maximum that these could be? Four, five, six, seven. That adds up to 22. The minimum for this group, three, four, five, six, adds up to 18. Now, there is only one number that can go in here, because it has to these have to be divisible by 4. And we said maximum 22, minimum 18. The only number in between those, including them, that is divisible by 4 is 20. And that 20 divided by 4 gives us a 5 as the average. So now we may not be able to actually affect any of these pencil markings. We know that the value, that the sum of these four is 20 to make their average 5. OK, so we couldn't have a 4 here, because then the arrow would have to go 4, 5, 6, 7, and it would add up to 22. Um, but I could leave a 3 in that cell. I can't have... No, I could have a 5 here. It could go 5, 6, 7. I can't have a 4 here, because then it would chase down towards 1 on the bulb. 4, 3, 2, 1 only adds up to 10. That is much more constrained. Maybe I can't even have a 5 here. 5, 4, 3, 2, which would be the maximum going on on the bowl, on the thermo if this was a 5, only adds to 14, nowhere near the 20. I'm now wondering if I can remove 6. 6, 5, 4, 3, only 18. That has to be a 7. OK, let's roll, well, let's roll that up here. I can put in 8 and 9 on the end of the thermo. I'm sure I can do the same sort of thing coming downwards on this one, but I just want to work out these possibilities. So these add up to 13, because these four add up to 20. 652 works. If that was a 5, 543 is the maximum. That has to be a 6. And now these add up to 7, and 1 is not possible, and it's either a 2-5 pair or a 3-4 pair. Right, now, I think symmetry of numbers is going to let us do exactly the same here. If this wasn't a 3, if this was a 4, the minimum group here is 4, 5, 6, 7, which adds up to 22, but those only add up to 20. So that's a 3. I think this is going to have to be a 4, otherwise the minimum would be 3, 5, 6, 7, which is 21. So that's a 4. And then these add up to 13. I almost feel, oh yeah, no, it's either 6, then 7, or 5, then 8. Yes, OK. And those digits are analogous to these ones in terms of high and low. Now I can write in 2 and 1 there, and we've started the puzzle. That's a really interesting connection through there. Um, there's a lot of connections that all seem to happen on this diagonal between arrows. I'm wondering if we're going to find similar issues. Right, let's look at this one. We've got a thermo bulb there that is now not one or two. So that has suddenly become worth pencil marking. Three, four, or six. Four, five, six, seven there. Five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, nine. This tip can't be 9 or 8, so I'm going to put 7, 6, 4 there. Six, I'm counting down this time. 6, 5, 4, 3. 5, 4, 3, 2. 4, 3, 2, 1. Now this is the average of these three, but we've got a floating digit not on the... So at the minimum, these two are 5, 6, and at their maximum, these two are 4, 5. That leaves quite a lot of freedom and possibilities. So, okay, here's something I'm going to suggest. If that was a 4, this has to go 3, 2, 1. Then this arrow will have 2, 1 and something on it. 
the maximum it can be is 12. Oh, and that would nearly work here with 5, 6, 1, which does add up to 12, but that 1 would repeat in the box. So that can't be a 4. There is no way to make that work. Probably this can't be a 3, and maybe even that can't be a 2. Because I think, in either case, we end up with this 2-1 situation here, which together with a 9 there at the max, only leaves one fill here of 5-6-1 and has the 1 clash. So no 3 there, no 2 here. Now, I can't rule 1 out of here, and I have a feeling it probably will be a 1 in the end, but... Can I do a symmetrical thing here? If that was 6, this would go 7, 8, 9. Now, if that's 8, 9, we've got 17 plus the minimum 1 here is 18. Oh, yeah, it is exactly the same. The only way to get 18 on this arrow is 5, 4, and a 9 there, which would clash with the 9 there. So in exactly the same way, we can't have 6 there, we can't have 7 here, we can't have 8 there because that would force 8, 9 onto this arrow, and we've just discovered that breaks. Now, I am going to briefly think about this digit. So the minimum sum here is 5, 6, 1 is 12. And the maximum is 7, 9, 8 is 24. They have to be divisible by 3 to give... Mm, some, somewhere between 4 and 8 here. This, this may not be the way to do it. The maximum here is 5, 4, 9 is 18. Okay, so this is somewhere between 4 and 8 there, and somewhere between 2 and 6 probably here. But 6 is certainly the minimum. No, the maximum. 6 is the maximum here, 5, 4 and a 9. So this is 6, 5, or 4. Now, I wonder if we're going to be able to prove that it's 5. If this was actually a 6, that would have to go 5, 4, 9. And these would add up to 18 as well, with a 6 there. I think there's ways to do that. I'm not sure. I don't feel like I can rule on that. Oh, there are a couple of items that are non-symmetrical in this puzzle. Maybe even the one in the middle. This one is worth looking at, surely. Right. This digit is 5, 4, 3, or 2. I'm not going to put 1, because that would require this arrow to add up to 3. In fact, I can't put 2, because this would have to add up to 6. It would be 1, 2, 3, and that cell would break. So, this arrow adds up to 9, 12, or 15, based on this averaging 3, 4, or 5. Now, can it be a 3, and this be a 9 arrow? Uh, I'll tell you what's interesting there. This pair adds up to 7. We've worked that out before. So if that's a 3 and this adds up to 9, then we have to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 to make up these five different digits in box 3 adding up to 16. So that would have to be 3, 4. This would have to go 1, 2, 6. With a 3 there, that would be a 4, 5 pair. And the digits out here would be 3, 7, and 8. And that doesn't quite work. OK, here's something I've just worked out about. So we, we know that this arrow has to be divisible by 3 because it's averaging to that number. This arrow has to be divisible by 2 to average to this. But also, these three numbers all average the same thing. So they have to be divisible by 3. So, the secret that I sometimes share with you is that every row, column and box in a Sudoku adds up to the same number. That number is 45, because that's the sum of 1 to 9. That is divisible by 3. This thermo is divisible by 3. 
This arrow, this whole section of three cells is also divisible by three to maintain the arrow status. Yeah, no, that is right. I'm just checking that in my head. This is also divisible by three. So this pair of cells, we've taken off lots of things that are divisible by three from a number that's divisible by three. This pair of cells must also be divisible by three and therefore doesn't include a three in them because there's no other digit divisible by three to go with it. So it's one of one four and one of two five. Uh, and that's not quite as conclusive as I would have liked. Can I do this circle? No, let's add up the totals. So if they add it up to 9, you've got another 9 here is 18. Oh, I said if that was 3, this is 1, 2, 6, so that's a 4, 5 pair. This is 3, 7, 8, and that doesn't work because the average of 3, 7, and 8, which add up to 18, and are divisible by 3, but their average is 6, and that is not a number that was, would be available in 3, 7, 8. So that's not a 3. Now, can we eliminate one other of these digits? If that's a 4, these add up to 12, that's a 9 is 21. Ah, but now, oh yeah, if that's a 4, this includes a 5. No, it includes a 1, and either 2 or 5. So if that's a 4, these add up to 12. The 1 and the 9 is 22, and either 2 or 5 takes us to 24 or 27, leaving 18 or 21 here, putting 6 or 7 in the circle, if that's a 4. Now, what happens if that's a 5? These add up to 15. We've got a 9 there. That's 24. There's a 4 here because we put a 5 there. No, there's a 2 here because we put a 5 there. That's 26. Going with either a 1 or a 4. 27 or 30, leaving this to be 18 or 15, so this is now 5 or 6 in those cases. Can it be 5 if that's a 5? 2 is used there, these add up to 15. I don't know, there may be some actual digit in the case testing, but I'm just doing it by total maths at the moment. I don't know that that thermo ad up to a number divisible by 3, so I don't think this column is quite as useful. But I do now know that this is 5, 6, or 7. Now, if it was a 7, these two arrows would both add to 14. This one would go 6, 8. So this would go 7, 6, 8, 9. That would have to be 3, 4, 5, adding to 12 with a 4 there. And 2, 1. Ah, oh, that does work. And if this went 7, 6, 8, this one would go 5, 9. Okay, that doesn't work. This can't be a 3, 4, 5 arrow because it breaks that cell. So if that was a 7, this would have to go 7, 6, 8, 9 there. The maximum value you've got is 3, 4, 5, which gets you to the minimum value for this cell, but 3, 4, 5 breaks that. So this is not a 7. Now, can I go further and rule out 6? Because I fancy this might be a 5. Now, if that's a 6, the trouble is I don't know exactly what these digits are, but they add up to 12, and they don't use 9. So they're either 3... Sorry, they're either 4, 8, or 5, 7, if that's a 6. Maybe I should just focus on the fact that if this is 4, this can't be 3, 4, 5, because that gets broken. So if that's a 4, this adds up to 12 without a 9 and without being 3, 4, 5. So there must be a 1 or a 2 in it then. But I think there's quite a few possibilities. Could be 
156, 138. Yeah, 8 in the row is now either there or there. Oh, goodness. And 8 there would make that 7. We'd get a 6 here. We'd also get a 6 there. Oh, I feel like we're very close to pushing through this. I didn't manage to rule out six from here. I was quite pleased I ruled out seven. Okay, let's think again. If that's a four, those add up to 12. With those, it's 19. Now, what happens to eight in this box? Does, it can either go, I suppose eight in the box is definitely in one of those two cells already. I don't think this is any use. Maybe I'm gonna to have to come back to this one. Maybe I can rule this stuff down quite considerably. Now, if that was a three, this is one or two. So we're up to four or five. And we have to get up to at least 12 for a four there. So this would be seven, eight or nine. Could this ever be five if that was a three? No. That's quite interesting. This would have to be a four if that's a three. That's interesting. That means this can never be a four because that forces this to be a three. But once this is a three, that has to be a four. So that's not a four. Now I must be able to do the same thing here. If this was a six, that would be a seven. These would add up to 15 or 16, which would take them above the five and force a six here. So a six here would force a six here. That can't happen. So, interesting. Now, what would a four here do? That would make this into a five. Four here would make that a five, and these at least six, seven, adding up to 13. And that's too many. Four here won't work now, because it makes that a five, and it's meant to make this arrow add up to 12, but that five forces these to be at least six, seven, which is 13. So four doesn't work, and I presume that six doesn't work looking west, because six makes that a five, the highest these can be is 4 and 3, is 7, and the arrow has to add to 18. So 6 doesn't work. Oh, this was doable the whole time. That's a 5. Now, thanks to the pencil marking, I get 6, 7. That makes this 8. That makes this 5, because these have to add to 20. And the 5 looks up here and makes that 4, 3, 2, 5. Again, this has to add to 20. And now this... Thermo has got constrained. Well, hang on, let's do some more Sudoku. Or Sudoku and Thermo. Um, now, this group, this arrow adds to 15. Oh, that's very constrained. 6, 7, 2, or 6, 8, 1. That can't be a 7, that is a 6. And this side... This can't be a three because you'd need at least a 10 here. So that's a four. Uh, and these two add up to 11 now. I'm not so good at working with averages as just numbers getting bigger or smaller. I must be able to remove one of these. This pair adds up to 15 minus six is nine. So that's not a nine. Well, these look like they interact quite hard. This pair adds up to 11. And this pair adds up to 9. So 1, 8 there would make this 9, 2. 2, 7 there would make this 3, 8. That doesn't look resolvable, but I thought this was going to get interesting now. Now, we worked out earlier that this can't be 3, 4, 5 because of that now. And there's not a two on it. So there's got to be a one on it and it's got to be there. 
because the arrow is only adding... Oh, maybe that one was only if it was adding up to 12. So hang on a second. Could this add up to 15 without using a one? Actually, it could. It could go three, four, eight. So that was a false conclusion I was trying to draw. Well done for spotting it. Um, let's do some Sudoku. Haven't done any of that for a while in this puzzle. A three in one of those cells. A four. Four is placed in box five. And that places four in box two. And six in column four. Oh, Sudoku is suddenly a friend. The remaining cells are one, two, and three in that column. That four has made this a five in the circle. So this adds to 15. Now that's gonna have some bearing on this, surely. If this was a six, we've got 18 there, 15 there is 33, plus a nine. Actually, that is two, one. Oh, I can, that definitely adds, that definitely adds up to 18 because now we know this adds up to 15. Plus 12 there is 27. This adds up to 18. The average is 6. That's a 3. 6, 9, 1, 2. So these two add up to 12 without using 9. And they can't be 4, 8 because that can't be 8. So they are 5, 7. This, this arrow, this thermo and arrow is 3, 4, 8. That's 3 in the corner. Losing its religion. We've got a six in one of these cells, seven in one of these. That one's one or nine. I've got a pair. No, never mind this pair. Let's look at this cell, six or nine. In fact, six and six say it's a six. Six, three, four. One, two, and nine in this column. Oddly, that's not very doable. Although I've now got a one, nine pair in row three telling me that these are three and eight. Well, I can't put eight there because of the arrow and thermo combined. So I'm gonna put three there and eight there, and to make this arrow work, no, yes, to make the average arrow work, that's a nine. That's gonna finish off the box, thanks to the pencil marking. This is a nine now, that still hasn't sorted out this little arrow, but this nine does. That makes that an eight. We have to make the arrow add up to 15 with three there. That's not a three. That eight makes this a seven. This arrow adds up to 15 as well. Then it's a two. Then I've got eight and one and a seven, six pair to fit in. But this is great. We're getting close now. This doesn't use 5, 8, which are a pair there. This is 2, 4, 7. Then I can put in a naked 1 there and a 3, 6 pair. That's become a 2. Um, that's not a 3 because of this 3 that we got. Oh, I've still got this whole arrow and this thermo to do, this double arrow. This must be very doable. Right, I cannot put one or nine in this circle because you can't average that on any of these arrows. So that is four or six. In fact, look, by Sudoku, it's a four. So these arrows add to 12. Right, in this box, three, four, six, eight are gone. That could be one, two, nine probably is. Yes, we're not using the five, so there's only one digit to exclude from one, two, seven, nine. So it is one, two, nine. This is a five, seven pair. And on this side, four, two, six, seven, there's a five right there by Sudoku. We're using one, three, eight, and nine, and three of those that add to 12 are one, three, eight, I can tell you. 138, that digit's a 9. The 138 triple sorts out 6 and 3 there. This is a 1 6 pair. They are resolved thanks to this 1 2 pair. Then we can fill in this number as a 9, and we are making great progress. That's a 7 to complete row 4. This is a 7 9 pair. It's going to come down to this thermo now, somehow. Oh no, hang on, I've got a three there. I don't know. 
Okay, I'm not quite seeing what to do next. So let's think about this digit. It sees four, five, six, seven in the box, three in the row, nine in the column. It's one, two, or eight, but it's not eight because of the thermo it's on. So that's one or two, making a pair here. So this is five, seven, eight, or nine in the row, but it's not five or seven in the column. It's eight or nine, but it can't possibly be nine when it's on the knuckle of a thermo there, so it's eight. And that is gonna disambiguate rows five and six, I believe or most of them. This is one, two, or three. That eight is looking down here. One, that's a three, that's a two, and I really think we're now finished. That is a very neatly put together puzzle. Not your average thermo puzzle indeed, although it is an average arrow puzzle, and it's very clever, and it's been solved 55 times in the last four days, which shows how popular Skojo is. And it's a great puzzle. Most enjoyable. I'm very pleased to have got the opportunity to do that one today for you. And we will be back with more Sudoku tomorrow, of course. See you then. Bye for now.